Welcome to Newsworthy Stories with Jacqueline Jimenez. You know, when some people start a business, instead of taking out a loan, they will try and raise money. Uh, something if you ever watch Shark Tank, you've always hear this, you know, a Kickstarter campaign. Well, how do you launch a Kickstarter campaign? Well, joining me now to talk more about that is John Garcia, who is the Kickstarter coach. And I love that name. John, thank you for joining me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you, Jackie. So tell us about, first of all, why are you a Kickstarter coach? And, you know, how did this even happen? I am a board game geek. <laughs> I have over 300 games I'm looking at all day long uh, right in front of me that inspire me. And one way that you get games before anyone else, and usually games that are hard to find in the stores, you go to Kickstarter. So Kickstarter has been around now maybe a little over 12 years. And I was on there from day one. I, I, you know, I knew about it and I loved it. And when it first started, it was really meant for the small guy like me, the one man, you know, new designer that needed to raise funds um, to in order to produce a game. That has since changed that. quite a bit. <laughs> I didn't. I would have never even thought to go to Kickstarter to find a game. That is so interesting. Kickstarter is now uh, launches about 500 games per month. And there have been games that have raised over $12 million on Kickstarter in, in as little as 30 days. It is unbelievable. Uh, there's a huge community. There's a huge demand. There's also a huge supply. There's quite a bit of, you know, it does give access to people like me, you know, to, to develop a game. But the competition has increased just as much. So it's it's harder, much harder now to fund as a new designer than it than it used to be, for sure. Well, you know, I first met John at a I think it was the Miami International Golf Show. I believe yeah. that's what it was called back then. Yeah. And it was their first one. And you were only a couple tables away from Carter Bonus, which if you, you're part of Newsworthy Stories or you follow Newsworthy Stories, uh you know Carter. Carter started his own line of golf apparel, and there he was. We couldn't get him near his table because he was near your table. We're like, "Come back, Carter!" You know. And who is that young man? He's you know behind the counter. That's my son, and actually co-designer of our game, the Table Golf Association. So my son Gavin, who just turned twenty, is also a big part of of this and and the company. So tell us about your game first of all, and you know the inspiration behind it because I love that story. So tell me that. And so people can understand that, you know, you're not just somebody calling yourself a Kickstarter coach. You have actually done it. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, um, you know, I love sports. I, um, I was, uh, you know, I'm as much a jock and the rare combination. I'm also as much a geek as I am a jock. So usually you're one or the other. So it's not a stereotype, but usually if you if you kind of migrate towards sports, you know, games is usually not as big on your on your radar. Um, but I'm kind of that rare combination. But I've also found that there's a lot of people like me out there, you know, that love sports and love the board game part of it. And, you know, just because I know so many games, I know so many mechanics, it, it really just came together. It's not like I had a plan to make a golf game. But one thing I knew is if I made a game, it had to be modular. So I didn't want a golf course that was the same golf course all the time. So I wanted to be a way that you could change it. And so I started messing with these tiles. The first version of our game literally were puzzle pieces that interlocked. Mm -hmm. So that was really cool, but it still limited your options, right? Because they had to lock in a certain orientation and it really wasn't the like the total dream that I had for a golf course that was modular. And then we went to these hexagon tiles and it was just a home run. It was like super exciting. But the second part of, of developing this that really said to me and the people that I play tested it with that this could work was the little ball. There's a little ball in this plastic ring that you flick and it feels, it, it's just amazing how it feels like golf. It, it's tabletop, but it feels like golf because the original version, Jackie, I had a little wooden disc. So a lot of dexterity games use like a wooden disc to flick. And that little wooden disc would get stuck on corners or would just, and it just didn't feel, and I literally put the game away. I was not going to finish the game. And one day at the office, I, I, we were playing, 
this mini shuffleboard game and the mini shuffleboard game had this little ball bearing in a plastic ring. And as soon as I touched it, I said, wow, this could work for the golf game. And that's what happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. So, and then, you know, because I knew Kickstarter and I actually failed, I actually tried a Kickstarter and I write this in my little book, uh, the Kickstarter. I know we'll talk about it. The, the, it's kind of like a playbook of what I did to be successful. So in about 2011, I tried my first Kickstarter and it was a boxing game, a boxing card game. And, and it failed miserably. <laughs> I, had, <laughs> I had about seven people pledge and I raised a total of $45. Oh my um, goodness. But I, so I knew Kickstarter was the way that I was going to try and launch this. And um, this time we were extremely successful, well beyond our expectations in this game. And so what did you want to raise and what did you raise and what have you been able to do since then? Sure. I mean, I thought we needed 10,000, which was my first mistake. I needed no less than 20,000. <laughs> uh, so I made plenty of mistakes along the way and learned a lot of lessons. And th that's why I think there's such a value to what I do with the coaching, because it is a personal experience. Um, but from that 10000 that we were trying to raise, we raised $158,000 on Kickstarter. And then that brought us attention from other people, distributors. And we did a deal in the UK and a deal in the US. That, and there's a thing called add-ons when the Kickstarter, there's, there's, there's basically like a front end of Kickstarter where you pledge and then there's a back end where there's other add-ons and things you could buy. So all said and done, we raised over $200,000 in that first camp, in that campaign. So is it complicated? I mean, because, you know, I'm a Shark Tank, you know, everyone's always talking about, oh, our Kickstarter campaign. And I'm always like, well, that's that's what one of the reasons that caught my attention, yeah. you know, because most people don't even know where to look. You know, the Kickstarter platform is not complicated. You you really are just creating a, a one giant landing page. It's, they call it the campaign page. And they walk you through what it is. So using it is simple. <laughs> Executing at a high level is what's difficult, you know, because having a great game is almost the last part of it <laughs> because there are so many great games that never get funded that never get to see the light of day. And really there's a couple of things. One is you're competing against established board game companies that have really, I say there's no business to be there. They're using crowdfunding to pre-order games that they're going to make anyway. And that's not really what this is supposed to be about. So I looked at the statistics and out of those 500 games, only about 1%, only about 1% get over $100,000 in funding. The average funding is between $1,000 and $10,000. So people go in there with all kinds of expectations. And I, what I do with my coaching is help them, you know, obviously set them up to succeed because you need a certain amount of emails in your database. At the, you know, That's one of the critical parts of it is people opting in so that they follow your game. And one of the most important things you can do on Kickstarter, Jackie, is, is actually receive your full funding in the first day. We were fully funded in the first hour. We had 10,000 people in hour one. Yeah. So we built up a lot of momentum going into it. People were ready for the game. They were excited about the game. And we had an incentive for them to pledge on day one, which is another tactic that I teach people. Um, and because because now you get on the algorithms of Kickstarter, they start to notice that, hey, this game is something people want to, you know, pledge and you need to pay attention to it. So it kind of pushes it up within within the 500 games we reached, even, even earning almost $200,000, we were only in the top 40. There was still 40 games ahead of us in funding just that one, just that month. That's how, that's how, that's how difficult it is. You know, well, I want to talk a little bit about you and your background, you know, why you're, also successful because you know you've got a marketing background you know yeah. you're not just again it's not just your experience but it's also your profession and uh, you know that will be able to, you'll be able to bring along in your kickstarter coaching if you will but also i like the idea that you used it to you know, like at golfing events for people who don't golf, but, you know, want to feel like they're part of the game or learn the game through your game. You know, you, you took it to different events and then you did took it to bars. You took it to, um, 
you yeah. know, you have these competitions and that's so smart because you took it, you know, from being just something you buy from the shelf, you just do at home and you made it a group activity. And I thought that was just brilliant. Thank you. I, I do make that, um, one of the main things that I explain is I'm a marketer and a lot of the people that I coach, they don't, they, I, I spoke to a gentleman the other day, Jackie, you know how much he invested in getting one game produced? Th $300,000. He invested $300,000 and funded for $59,000 on Kickstarter. So obviously it was not, you know, was not very successful. The difference is my marketing background for sure, you know, over 20 years. And now what digital marketing has become, it really makes it powerful you know, and, and you need it. Uh, you need it to be functioning at the highest level in order to really get a Kickstarter done. When I did my first Kickstarter in 2011, I just said, oh, I got this cool game and I'm going to put it out there and people are going to love it and they're going to pledge. It doesn't work that way. You have to work hard. We did a lot of videos showing our game uh, before we launched. We Sorry, said, did you say videos? <laughs> a lot of videos. <laughs> and our game is fun. We have a fun game. Some games are more complicated and more involved. And our game is fun. So it was easy to tell the story of our game. Um and and I think it drew it drew a lot of attraction to it. So we had a in in a two month period, I raised about a thousand emails uh, backers, um, and then we had a strong incentive to back on day one. So those those things, yes, I think without a doubt, I'm really not any better. I really see myself as a mediocre you know board game designer. I'm just really getting started. Um, there's a lot of better board game designers out there, but they're not getting the chance because they don't have the marketing. So that's another definitely thing. And I do think it spills over. Marketing is a big wheel, right? It's a big, with a lot of spokes. And so my events as part of marketing, you know, to me, it's an investment. It's not an expense. I invest in going to these places. We always have people, the next day, I always have orders on the game. Um, and now what we did is we designed an oversized version. So they're bigger tiles and it's a complete set that we're trying now to sell to breweries and sports bars and things like that, because everyone's tired of Jenga and cornhole and darts <laughs> and even <laughs> table tennis. And I think it's time to like, our game can convert, this is what we're, we're marketing now, Jackie, we can convert your pool table into a golf course. <laughs> that's, Absolutely. That's I think that is yeah. a fantastic idea. And, and I think it's, you know, being innovative that way. You know, it's something that everyone can, you know, do. It's not hard to do, you know, and you're determined, you know, to get it just, you know, in that little peg or hole or whatever you want to yeah, call it. Yeah. And, you know, and it's addicting, I think, you know, I could tell from the people, they were like, oh, just, I was so close, I'm going to try again, you know, and I think, and it's fun because you get to laugh at yourself, you get to compete, you know, and, and you get a winner. And, and I think that's a, just. And we have a trophy in the, in the box. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know, Again, because of my sports background, I said, you know, a lot of times we, I love playing games. We play all the time and you win and it's like, okay, you win and you put it away, you know? So I said, no, my game, if you win, is gonna, even though it's a little plastic tiny trophy, it's still, uh, you, get, you get the bragging rights. And I think uh, right. you know, it was important for us to have that in the game. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, the other thing is you have some things coming up, um, just like Carter. <laughs> Carter will be at the PGA show in Orlando, which is the biggest merchandising golf show in the country. What better place to have it? Yeah. Tell us about that. And where, where will you be if they want to find you? Well, first of all, Carter is a superstar and and kudos to you because I mean, what you do for him and and I mean, we met that day and I was instantly just drawn to the to everything, the whole story. So, being, you know, this opportunity to work kind of side by side with Carter at the PGA show is is a blessing for us. We're super excited about it. Um so the PGA show is I don't know, 70,000 people there. I, it, it's just tremendous. It's it's the whole industry comes from all over the world to South Florida. And we have an opportunity uh, to, to to show our game to buyers and, and, and everyone in the industry. And funny enough, Jackie, I just got a call last week from a gentleman who helps place sports merchandise into big box stores. Now, we did get into one already. We're in the PGA Tour Superstore. So that was- Oh, Excellent. Yeah, so we just Excellent. we had a we had an order for all sixty stores, and that was another big reason why we wanted to be at the at the PGA show. Um, 
And now this gentleman uh, reached out to me and he has a great long track record of, of putting, you know, uh, golf merchandise. And he sees this as kind of a gift item. At this point, I'm okay with whatever you want to call it. <laughs> you know, I know we have a great game that stimulates golf and really is kind of true to the game. We wanted to create something that really, you know, had the nuances of golf and and, and things with the hazards and, and even the wind. Like we have an element in the game for the wind. So we'll have it on display. And what I'm excited about is um, having meetings during the show with buyers and, and having it there on display because – We've just, you know, the PGA Tour Superstore is a great store. It's a great name to be a part of. Um, and we're hoping it's a, it's kind of like a springboard or, you know, a, a, a way for us to get into other retailers. And that is another very difficult thing. <laughs> just real quick, no retailer would take a call from me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just won't happen. I have one skew. No matter how great the game is, it's very difficult because there's a network and a process right in place. In order for us to get into the PGA Tour Superstore, we had to first get in with a distributor called Proactive. And they are, are the only reason that we can get the game. Like, they're not going to buy directly from us. So there's a whole thing that has to happen. And the reason we got in there is because I work with a retail consultant already. Um, who's, a, who's an amazing guy. And he's pr he's put it in front of Dix and Golf Town and Golf Galaxy. But so far, PGA Tour Superstore was the one that, you know, that wanted it. <laughs> and we had to jump through hoops to get it because, of course, they put the order in very late in October. And oh they wanted goodness. it by Black Friday. And we had to ship oh the air, air freight from China. It was crazy, but it was worth it. You know, it, it it's already opening more doors for us. So, yeah. That's incredible. Now, I, I don't I want to be able to tell people what number, what table number will you be at at the PGA show? Oh, you caught me a little off guard there. I don't have it. Because uh, I know you had sent it to me, yeah. I think, a while back. But um, yeah, I could, I uh, I'll, I'll look it up while we speak. Uh, continue. Okay. Or you know what? Yeah. Just put it in the comments. OK. Whenever you get a chance, we'll put it in the comments so you can, you know, oh. you'll know exactly which. Um, you know what? Actually, I have I have it here because being the marketer that I am, we already printed the trifles. There you go. <laughs> uh, Wait, hold uh, on. Let me let me pull it full so we can see it see it really well. So okay. Yeah. So what so, is the, the table number? So yeah, um, the booth number is uh, forty nine eighty one. Forty nine eighty one. Forty nine eighty one. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we uh, we put these together, obviously, just to walk around the show because that's just as powerful. Even if people don't come to your booth, you can just walk the show and introduce yourself. And it's a it is a real I found it. I went once before just as a visitor, a very friendly environment, uh, you know, community of everyone kind of knows everyone in, in the industry. So, you know, I, I think uh, just going around and, and being able to introduce myself and, and hand these out should be, should be really worth the time. Just that alone. <laughs> Well, I tell you, well, you know, Carter's story, that is where yeah. he became known. I mean, oh, really? Yeah. Ernie Els, you know, yes, uh -huh. he, he had, I was <laughs> Excuse me. crazily able to get his first interview in life live on the Golf Channel. And after that happened, with all the media there already to cover, you know, yes. everyone else, right? every golf magazine and every station was there and they wanted to talk to Carter, yeah. but it also got the attention of Ernie Els. And from there, you know, Ernie Els invited Carter to the Chubb Classic and we haven't stopped since. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, we really Sports. haven't. And now Sports one thing illustrated. I yeah, so many great yeah. things. Yeah. One thing I will, you know, really encourage you to do because you have not only a great story between, you know, you and your son and how you guys came together, because you kind of came together through COVID too. Isn't that correct? I'm sorry. What was it? You kind of came, uh, this table golf kind of came together through COVID. Through COVID. Yes. We started yeah. pretty much during that time. Yeah. All right. So yeah. my thing is you've got a great story. You know, this was kind of born out of, you know, Hey, we're here. We're, we're locked in. <laughs> yeah. How are we going to, you know, what are we going to do? And then, you did it with your son, which is awesome. Thank the you. other thing is you want to contact the local media in Orlando mm. and mm. let them know you're coming. Or yeah. I would even recommend that you set up something on the days prior to uh, you going to the PGA show so that they have something to cover. Maybe mm. set, it, set it up with one of the restaurants or, you know, establishment oh, yeah. and That's just a good, do yeah. a table golf competition 
and just bring attention to it and invite the media to come. And that's a no brainer. Oh, um, that, that is a brainer because I didn't think of it. So <laughs> yeah, that's a great, that's well, a great you know, idea. You know, yeah. That's me all day, you know? So yeah. No, we have some it. breweries that we know in Orlando, so that would be perfect. Yeah, maybe that's well, I'm Saturday. actually from, I was actually, went to high school there, so. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, so I'm very familiar. I'm there, there quite a quite a bit because I have family okay. there. We'll talk after the show, so. <laughs> <laughs> but, you that's know, a that's a great idea, awesome. yeah. Yeah, I mean, because we are already, I say we, meaning Carter, already yeah. getting media lined up nice. for the PGA show. And we're already getting those stories lined up. And that's what you want to do is you want to line up your uh, coverage mm -hmm. prior to the event right. so people know you're there. It's great if you get it while you're there as well, obviously. But definitely during the days, the earlier, the better. So just be thinking that you're a marketing guy. I don't have to tell you the whole world. But, you know, that's what I would, you know, that's my little two cents. I love and, it. Yeah, uh, or maybe I want to hear how much coverage you get, <laughs> and then tell come back and tell me so I yeah. can. Yeah, or a little networking else. event after the after the show where we're we're playing table golf. Yeah, that would that would be pretty cool. All right, absolutely. I love it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And even that, you know, um, people you you meet at the event, but yeah. uh, you'll be dead though. You might be dead to do something after. <laughs> you'll be tired, I would think. <laughs> after but if you're leading up to it on those like monday tuesday if you're yeah. going to be in town because mm -hmm. um, i think it actually starts that wednesday right okay I, yeah I think so. yeah yeah, yeah wednesday, something wednesday, that Friday. the day before you know it starts and that kind of gives them a reason to be involved otherwise it's not really a, even though it's a big merchandising story it's not really local news but if you bring people to the establishment, to that establishment, then it becomes a news story. Then people want to come out. And so then it localizes the story. Otherwise it's, it's, it's Orlando. So otherwise it's just another event, Yeah, you know, but so they it, have events all the time. You know, what you just did is a great point of why a coach is so important because here I am a, a marketer and I, and I could probably give that advice as I should, you know, include that with PR as part of the advice, you know, with, and yet sometimes you don't do it for yourself, you know, you, you're doing everything you're in the you know let's say that too close to the you know forest for the trees kind of thing and so you need someone you know just like i should have thought of that right you would think of a, and yet it was it was a brainer i mean because you i'm focused on you know i did the trifolds and i'm focused on what am i going to have at the table and who who might i meet but i, I had no thought of of putting an event together and now I just think it's the greatest, the greatest possible you know, thing I could do over there because golfers, I mean, everyone in the community is going to be there. I mean, everyone in golf is going to be there. So it's just a great point of, you know, being able to speak to someone because you could know it all. You could know it all and just miss it because, you know, you're in details that just kind of, you know, uh, you know, for some reason you, you, you don't, you overlook it. So thank you. <laughs> no, you're absolutely welcome. And I, and I, I just say that because, a lot of people, they see my stories, they know my stories and the show even, right? Yeah. But I'm a media strategist. That's what I do. And yeah. I have workshops and master classes and I encourage people to take them and um, and I have them regularly. So make sure you, you know, sign up for them. I absolutely know. will. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, we uh, are looking to do the same with Kickstarter Coach, some master classes. Um, or yeah. we can collaborate. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. that might even be an, uh, a collaboration because, you know, it I know does fit. it does fit perfectly together. Um, it, it, it's it's kind of like I've been trying to do more with PR and, you know, PR is one of those things. It's so valuable and it's just it's you know, I know you you teach people how to do it, but there's there's a lot of network. You know, there's a lot of that goes with the experience that you have. That's just you can't, you could teach that, but you still have to have, you still have to go through a lot of the experience and, and meet the people and, and all these things. So I think PR is a super, it's just totally invaluable. And, um, and I would love to work more together. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's one of those things I've, because most, and I don't consider myself a PR person because I'm a news producer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I do PR for my clients. <laughs> you know, yeah, and I, 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 I group it all in under, on the public relations, but I know, I know, and everyone I know does. Yeah. But the reason why I say that is because as a news producer, I used to receive all the press releases. Right. And when you were talking earlier, I laughed 
because you were saying that these, you know, in your, what you were doing for the, the businesses that didn't understand, you know, they had made this major investment, but, and they had this great game, but they couldn't get it, you know, get the mm -hmm. funding for it. Same thing. There's yeah. so many great stories out there that are not getting covered because of their press release. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand most people don't understand what newsrooms consider newsworthy uh, because if they did, they would send more stories. And that's mm -hmm. what I try to tell people is, look, I just try to, it's just a, usually a small turn right. from where they are uh, because we're so used to selling ourselves, our businesses mm -hmm. are, and nonprofits mm -hmm. are because they're used to trying to get sponsorships, funding. But if you just turn it to where it's not on you, but on the story. Yeah. You're done, you know, that. and then yeah. then it makes it a new story. And there's reasons why. But that's, you know, what's behind it. So you need a Kickstarter coach. If you're trying, don't try and do it by yourself. Save yourself some time and money. You yes. know, yeah. go Absolutely. speak to John, you know, about these things. He's got a great game. He has great experience and he's fun. <laughs> yeah. And we're and we're in it every day. I, I just finished 20 tasks, you know, before we jumped on the call of all these things that are happening because we're launching two new games next year. Um, and, and so, you know, it because the landscape is constantly changing, too. So it's not like a set it and forget it type of thing with Kickstarter. There's there's always new advances, new tools. There's things called Backer Kit um, that, are, that are, is another platform that helps you manage everything. Then there's just really just the work of logistics and people underestimate shipping. And that's where people can get funded and lose money. And this happens all the time. You get funded and you you just didn't do the math correctly. You didn't do all of the what it takes. We have calculators. We have spreadsheets. We really we show you ROAS, which is return on ad spend, which is a huge thing that people don't understand. So there's there's really a lot of technical things to it. Um, it's much more than just having a great game or a great book or a great film because we can help with that as well. We help the book get funded. We help the film get funded. It's not just games. We kick, you know, Kickstarter is good for any creative project. Board games just happens to be a very large category, um, but films are also a very large category. Usually they need a bigger budget. That's part of why it's a bigger category. But again, some board games have, have reached over $12 million. It's just, it's just incredible. I love to see I'm gonna, that. I'm going to give you one more tip then. Yeah. <laughs> if you haven't connected with Film Lauderdale, Film Lauderdale. connect with Film Lauderdale. Okay. Uh, I interviewed uh, the film commissioner. Okay. <laughs> and Excuse me. the opportunities are just wide open for what you're sharing. Uh, film Lauderdale, you will just, mm -hmm. tons, you will just be such an asset. Uh, yeah, I mean, right now we're taking on uh, clients at no charge. I decided as part of the launch, we're going to do this as long as we can. Really, we've I've met already amazing, amazing people, super smart. Just, you know, when you launch on Kickstarter, you're all in. Like, this is your life on the line. <laughs> There's nothing else, you know, that matters. And I love to see that. I love to be a part of that. Um, but so right now, you know, we're launching and uh, I'll reach out to Film Lauderdale because, you know, I'll make that same offer. Um, and, and, and you know, I think it's important for me as a credibility. Obviously, you know, I have my poster up there uh, with 1,100 backers and 158,000 raised. That gives me a lot of credibility. People definitely respect that. But I we do want testimonials from people that I'm coaching. Um, so anyway, we're offering that right now as a way as a way to get started with us. So. I will definitely do an email introduction for you. Um, Excellent. Because Thank I, you know, like I said, I've known you or I've met you over this past year. You, I just, I've watched your work mostly on social media and, you know, just going back and forth, you know, as we have yeah. interacted and um, John's the real deal. So give him a chance, try him out. And uh, I think it'll be great. Uh, so, John, the best way to reach you is kickstartercoach.com. Any yeah, other suggestions? Little, yeah, there's a little calendar right in there. You could schedule the free discovery call. Um, and like I said, right now, you know, there's no hard time limit or I'm not trying to sell anybody to, you know, <laughs> you know, contact me now for the for the free uh, consultation. But we have also I just want to put it out there. My pricing is five hundred dollars for four coaching calls of an hour. So. 
you really get a lot for a small investment because in four hours I can literally pick everything kind of apart that needs to be, you know, I, sh I don't hold back at all. And it's not really a matter of opinion at that point. It's really a matter of getting all your ducks in a row. So like you said, it could save you a lot of money, a lot of frustration. You just don't need to go it alone. Um, but all said and all that said, uh, we are right now completely, you know, offering it at no charge. And I and I'm as excited about it as the people I get on the call with. It's just, it's just to me, this is my passion. I've always loved coaching. So I used to be a basketball coach. I love basketball. And I said, you know what? If I if I did it and I'm just this regular guy and I could do it, not that uh, you know, there's gonna be a recipe, you know, or a formula that automatically succeeds, but if I could do it, I know other people could do it. I would love to help them do it. Thank you so much, John. Thank you, Jack. I appreciate and thank you, really. Thank you for reaching out uh, and getting me uh, on this. You know, I, I, I really appreciate this and support from from people like you is what really makes it worthwhile. My pleasure. Have a great day. All right. Take care. Bye bye.